Good evening, everybody. We are welcome to this month's edition of Mini Couples Clinic. We thank God for the privilege and the opportunity that God has granted each and every one of us to be able to partake of what the Lord has prepared for us again this month. We thank him for his faithfulness all the time. And we thank him that he has brought us again this month to partake of this table that he has set before us. I'd like us to go before the Lord just to pray. Please uh, talk to God as a person. Thank him for this opportunity to be here, opportunity to, to attend this meeting opportunity to hear from the Lord, opportunity to be open for the Lord to walk upon our lives once again. Please thank him for that great opportunity. Thank him for that privilege. And please present your heart before him tonight. That Lord, here is my heart. Have your way with me tonight. Lord, I have come to encounter you. I have come to hear from you. I have come to be helped by you. Here am I. Beginning with my heart, please have your way, Lord. Speak to my heart. Whatever habits that I need to correct, whatever habits must be uprooted from my heart, from my mind tonight, please, Lord, in your mercy, please do so. Whatever habit has become an addiction and is harmful to me, it's harmful to my home. Please, Lord, feel free tonight to touch on such habits, such addictions. Lord, feel free tonight to uproot such habits from my life in the name of Jesus. By the time this meeting is ending tonight, cause me to breathe an air of liberation from toxic habits, from poisonous habits, from habits that are strange to Jesus. Please, Lord, do so in my life, do so in my home, according to the multitude of your mercies. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity again to present our hearts before you. Lord, we ask tonight that in your mercy, you will come to us. You will visit us afresh. You will speak to us in a way that will be very clear to us. You will correct everything you need to correct. You will help us to agree with you, to separate ourselves from every wrong habit in the name of Jesus. We pray that after tonight, we will not be under plague of wrong habits anymore in the name of Jesus. Please, Lord, do something permanent with our hearts and with our lives, with our homes tonight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to call on uh, Sister Tolulope Adejumo to lead us in the hymn. Thank you very much, sir. I want to say good evening to every one of us. And even as we are trusting the Lord to rid us of all habits, of all 
habits that harms the whole. We'll be taking our him right away. We'll be taking our him. Rock of ages cleft for me. I want us to trust the Lord prayerfully tonight. Even as we sing this hymn together, I want us to make sure that we are singing the hymn. Yes, it's a prayer that we are praying unto the Lord. I want us to jointly sing the hymn together as we are praying in our hearts. Rock of ages, clear from me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy womb, the side which blow, be your seed, the who cure. Save me from his guilt and No, the land borrowed my hand. Can't fulfill thy laws in my Would my zeal no respite, no. Would my tears forever flow? All for sin, who not unto thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling, naked come to the for dress, helpless look to the for grace. For I to the fountain fly, wash me save your I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I saw once or no, see the on thy judgment true. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. I want us to just trust the Lord tonight that the Lord will wash us. I want us to trust the Lord. I want us to trust the Lord this night. I want us to beg the Lord. I want us to plead with the Lord this night. I don't know the desires of our hearts, even as we come to his presence tonight. Please beg the Lord to help you. Let us beg the Lord. Let us trust the Lord that the Lord will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, yes, we would like to commence the teaching for tonight. Um, I just want to let us know that uh, if we have questions, um, we should note our questions and send to the platform um, or send to the admin. Those who are part of our admin, they would help us to collate the questions together and uh, present it at the right time. So if we have questions, let's note down our questions. But right now I'm going to um, welcome our teacher for tonight, uh, Brother Larry Adiboe. You're welcome, sir. 
Thank you very much. And uh, I want to welcome everyone again to this month's couples clinic. And um, tonight is going to be a little bit of uh, partly teaching and partly a discussion um, as we tried to do, I think last month or some few months ago, we did something like that. We are dealing with uh, the subject habits that harm the home. And um, we are going to be, I'm going to be joined by about three or so couples. My wife will join me and then three other couples will be joining us for a discussion on the topic. But we are going to begin by taking a very short um, beginning, an introduction to our discussion tonight as we look at these habits that harm the home. If you will bow down your heads with me, we will pray together. Father, we thank you very much for this night. We are grateful to you for bringing us together again as is your manner. And we know that you will never ask us to seek you in vain. As we seek you tonight, please let us find you. Let us find you as individuals. Let's find you as families. Let's find you as husbands. Let's find you as wives. Father, we pray that you will send your word to us, both as individuals and as families. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Father, in these discussions, please help us to find ourselves. For not only to find our shortcomings and our uh, and our wrongdoings, but to find a way out, to find victory, to find a way of correcting this so that our homes will be a better place. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. We pray for all those who are probably hearing who are not married yet, uh, those who are planning to get married, those who are single and engaged, and those who are just here wanting to learn for the future. Please send your word to all of us in, as appropriate. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, we are looking at the topic habits. Breaking. Breaking the habits that harm the home. Um, we will begin by looking at those habits. And I've been actually, uh, my mind has been in two forms, whether as we are looking at the habits, we'll be talking about breaking it at the same time. Or we look at these habits, they seem to be quite uh, much that I have outlined. I think we'll be doing it together. As we are looking at the habits, we'll be looking at how to break those habits and the scriptures that will help us to break those habits will be delving into the word of God to see them as we are going on. Because if we don't uh, break the habits, we have not done much by just outlining them. So tonight, I would like you to, first of all, uh, let's define what habits are. And I will just read um, two definitions I found in the dictionary for us to have a concrete um, idea of what a habit is. Uh, the Merriam Webster dictionary says a habit is a settled tendency or an unusual manner of behavior that is something like, uh, if you give an example, they say her habit of taking a morning walk. When something has become settled tendency with you, something you do regularly, an acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. For example, uh, for example, somebody gets up by force of habit when it's a particular time. Something that almost becomes unconscious, something that you, you have done it so repeatedly that your 
<laughs> your body has adjusted uh, such that even when you are not thinking about it, it just happens because it has become your habit. Now, the Wikipedia says a habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. More or less, they are saying the same thing. Something that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. And then the American Journal of Psychology defined the habit from the standpoint of psychology. They said, it is more or less a fixed way of thinking, willing or feeling acquired through previous repetition of a mental experience. When something has been repeated quite a number of times and you acquire that feeling and that desire to do things just by almost subconscious. Um, I don't know, I, I just remembered, you know, something that you do repeatedly that becomes almost a habit. I remember for about a year and a half, about one and a half years, I when I was still living in Abekuta, and I was just recently posted to Bumosho, my family was still back in Abekuta, so my home was there. But because of work, I had to travel to Bumosho, and I came to Bumosho for one week every month. So for a period of about 16 or 18 months before I moved my family down to Obumosho, I used to drive from Abekuta to Obumosho. I remember one day I had finished in Obumosho and I was returning back home. Oh, no, normally, once I come in those days, I would go from Obumosho to Oko, to Ejibo, from Ejibo to uh, Iwo. Yeah, I think that's Iwo, from Iwo down to Ibadan, and I will go home. So that's how I, I used to drive. I have been doing this for almost 18 months. And then for my, finally, my family moved to Ogbomosho, and we were living in Ogbomosho. Some few months after the family moved, I was no longer traveling back to Abekuta. But now some few months after we go to Ogbomosho, I was supposed to go and preach in Ife. So I will go through the same route, I went to Oko, to Ejibo. But instead of going to towards Iwo, I will now need to go straight towards Ede Oshobo in order to go to Ife. But you know, because of force of habit, once I got to Ejibo, I was not even thinking, I think I can't remember what I was in, whether I was praying or whether I was thinking something else. I got to Ejibo, I had already turned to the road going to Iwo. I had actually gone for more than six, seven kilometers before I suddenly realized that, wow, I'm on the wrong road. I'm supposed to be going towards Ife. But because of force of habit, it has become a part of me. So you see a habit forms because of repeated action. Anything you do repeatedly over a period of time, your body adjusts, your memory records it, your mind can automate it subconsciously, even without thinking. And so when, what we are dealing with tonight are those actions that we have done repeatedly, repeatedly, until they have become a part of us. Like the Yoruba man will say, that's a habit, something that has become a part of you, that if you don't break it, what do you mean by that? They will keep going on until that body actually dies. So that's a habit. And we have found out that the beginning, and I'm, I'm going to be repeating this towards the end when we are going to be looking at how to break a, a, a force of habit. We need to look quickly, briefly, at the origin of habits. How does a habit form? And I will just quote a popular saying of mine, which I agree with. Uh, because I have found it uh, very, very true. Somebody said, and I agree in Toto, it says, so a thought, reap an action. 
Sow and action, like sowing and reaping. Sow and action, reap a habit. But it goes on to say, sow a habit, reap a character. And when you sow a character, you reap a lifestyle. And of course, your lifestyle becomes your eventual history when you die. So let me say it again for those who would like to write it down. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a lifestyle. In other words, all habits originate from repeated actions, and all actions originate and they start as a thought. Whether it is a thought that you are really aware of or is an unconscious thought, that's where all habits begin from. It's a habit, it's a, it's a thought that begins an action, that gives birth to an action. An action give birth, gives birth to a habit, a habit gives birth to your character, your character becomes your lifestyle. So that's how it's are formed. So when we want to break a habit, we will not just be looking at breaking the action, the act, the action that has become a habit. We'll be looking at starting from the root, and that is to break the thought process that gives back to the action that has formed a habit. Let me also say that many, many habits, like we discovered uh, last month, we, we, when we're looking at, um, uh, all right, thank you. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a lifestyle. Last month, we were looking at vicious cycles, and we saw that many, many homes have entered several vicious cycles without knowing. And many of these vicious cycles are very difficult to break, like we saw. Um, after today, I promise, and I, I will, will still drop it on the platform, some of the vicious cycles that we outlined last month have been identified for us. We'll gather them together and we can drop it in the platform so that you can look at these videos. There may be many more, but at least this is to make you aware and to know, to help you to know where your prayers ought to go. So, but we now discover that it takes not only the power of God to break uh, the vicious cycles, we saw that we also need, we can break those vicious circles by deliberate acts of righteousness. If you remember last month, we, we read about, uh, I think it was King Nebuchadnezzar that God gave a counsel and said, break off your sins by acts of righteousness. It is deliberate acts that break, a deliberate action that breaks the vicious circles. It was as I was meditating on this that I now realized that actually what sponsors vicious cycles in our home are these habits that have been formed from repeated actions. It is repeated actions that makes us keep going on through the same thing, despite the negative results that are coming to us. We may not even realize that it is these things that are bringing the negative results, but because we, are, we keep repeating this over and over and over again, they become a habit. And once the habit is formed, you can be sure it will feed that vicious cycle that we described last month. So we are going to be looking at habits that harm the whole. At this time, I'm going to be, I'm going to invite the other, my other brethren to join us in, um, in discussing this because I want us to be looking at each of those habits, one after the other. We'll be looking at the harm they present to the family, and then we'll be looking at how to break those harms. Uh, I'm joined by three other families. Um, first, I'm bringing in the Anumas. 
Yeah. Isaiah and Kweju Anuma, they join us from Lagos. You're welcome. They are looking like a very blue family. You're welcome. Thank All right. You, now, the Awola nurse joined me from Abekuta. This is Isaiah and Kweju. Uh, uh, the Awola nurse are Dele and uh, Ronke. They have joined me from Abekuta. Welcome. You're welcome, please. All right. And uh, finally, I'm bringing in the Johnsons. Yes, Penga and Titilayo Johnson from Namibia. I hope I am correct. Let me hand over to uh, Brother uh, Johnson for some uh, quick intro. Over to you, Penga. Go ahead. All right, thank you, sir, and a very good evening to every one of us to, tonight. Um, indeed, um, there are several habits that, um, whether we are conscious of them or not, they bring harm to the family. And even if you have been married for many, many years, or you are newly married, um, it is very important that in the journey of marriage, we are conscious of um, the habits that we are exhibiting in the home. There are those that are good. There are those that harm the relationship and that are transferable to our children. So it is very important that as we go through these um, habits tonight, we are trusting God that the Lord will uh, fit your family into this discussion. The Lord will speak to your own home as couples. I want you to be very attentive as we begin to discuss them and as we um, bring examples to uh, display the issues that God is planning to raise with us tonight. So I would like to again welcome um, all the couples that are joining us um, and all our brothers and sisters that will be helping us to facilitate this session. Having said that, um, just like um, our elder has said, habits are those things that are unconsciously repeated. We have repeated them so many times that they have now become permanent um, in our lives and which could be affecting our relationship. So we're going to be discussing them and we're going to be grouping them into different sessions so that um, they will be well categorized in our mind and we'll be able to pick them from there. So again, I would just want to repeat um, the last word from my side is that um, how does habit, how are they formed? As we have it on the screen there, so a thought, you reap an action, so an action, you reap a habit. And so a habit, we said you reap a character, and as you sow characters, it becomes our lifestyle. So I'm trusting that the Lord will speak to every of our homes and our, our families tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Johnson. Now, um, I would like to um, group the habits that we're going to be looking at this night into three. Actually, in my trying to study habits, I checked different things. I found out that uh, many people group habits differently. Some group habits from the psychological perspective. Some people group it from whether it is a foundational or situational, in which case some habits are formed because of situations that develop around you. Uh, some say that habits can be uh, divided into whether they are productivity habits, they are lifestyle habits. They are this. There are these different ways in which you can group habits but i decided to go biblical of course in looking at this habit and i decided the bible says that man is a tripartite being that is man is a spirit he has a soul and he lives in a body so i chose uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 i pray your whole spirit soul and body be sanctified unto the coming of the lord so Man is a tripartite being. That means we, we, we are three parts in nature. 
So I decided to group habits alongside those lines. You fix habits that are formed by your body. Then there are mental habits, habits that are formed from your mind. And then there are, of course, spiritual habits. By the time I listed everything, I became afraid. I was not sure again whether we'll be able to finish everything today. But then we will start somewhere. And if we don't finish it, if God permits, we may continue. I'm even looking at, I did not do good justice to the spiritual habits because I saw that uh, the ground was already full. So maybe we may come back to look at spiritual habits. But if we are able to deal with uh, physical habits and uh, mental habits, and then uh, next month, as the Lord provide, uh, permits, we can look at uh, uh, spiritual habits. Actually, as I was studying this also, I saw that all of these habits are negative habits. And uh, I was looking at, ah, we shouldn't talk about negatives only. We should also talk about habits that help the whole. So that's already something that is uh, brewing in my mind. If we are not able to, we will not try to go into it today. We we'll look at the negative habits that can spoil relationship in the home. Then, by the grace of God, as the Lord will bring us on, one of these days also, if we, maybe next month, we may combine that with the spiritual wrong habits and combine with the correct habits now and be able to finish it. So we'll be looking at habits that help heal, habits that you know sustain and promote and maintain good relationship in the home. So let's begin with physical habits. I decided to start from the one that is physical. And I must, I don't know which one is more difficult to break, but I found out that physical habits are very difficult to break because they are sponsored by our physicality, by our body. They are sponsored by our, our action. And the body has a way of recording these things such that you don't even need to think about it again. Before you know what is happening, you're already into it. Now, let's start from physical habits. And I have broken physical habits into two. I broke physical habits into two, all right? So the first habits, set of habits that we are going to be looking at are the physical habits. And I have grouped the physical habits also into two. Habits that are body-related habits, habits that has to do with this body. And then habits that are formed as you put the body to work, or what I call work habits. So let's look at body habits. Our focus will be on how they harm, how they affect the home negatively. So we are going to be looking at these habits, and our discussion is going to be on how these habits negatively affect the home. So the first, can I, uh, let me bring the first three body habits and we are going to be looking at it together. So we are going to look at these body habits. The first is sleep-wake habits. The second will be hygiene habits. And the third will be nutrition habits. And I have uh, brought those things out for us to discuss. Some people are early sleepers. Others are way, uh, 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 late sleepers. You can see my wife is really smiling. The smile is very, very, is blackmailing. <laughs> it's, it's intimidating. Because you say, hey, I have caught you today. But how do the fact that a husband sleeps late or wakes late 
sleeps early, wake early, how do they affect the home? Where should I begin with? Should I begin with Isaiah? Since Isaiah is also very smiling very, very much. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm praying you can make your comments as quick, quick. You know, remember that our ground is full. So, pop, 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 go ahead. Okay, praise God. Um, I'll just say that um, maybe because we live in Lagos, uh, and Lagos doesn't sleep early, so we're used to um, averagely as a family sleeping uh, maybe around 11, 30, 12. Uh, but again, like you said, the matter of habits, uh, because over the years I had um, I formed the habit uh, early in my Christian journey, where I said to myself that um, I should be awake praying to the Lord before a Muslim will wake up to pray his prayer. So that conditioned me to waking up much early again. So having now lived in Lagos, um, I now have a culture in Lagos that doesn't sleep early, but a personal habit that wakes up early. So that has um, um, shaped my sleep and wake uh, culture. I don't know if you wants to. Before Peju will come in, I don't want us to focus on ourselves yeah. as if we are interviewing you. We are not interviewing you. We are discussing this subject. So I don't want you to limit it to your own personal experience. I want us to speak, you know, wide. Uh, and how does it affect? Because you have only told us what you do. What I'm really interested in is how does it affect uh, the home? relationship in the home. Is Pedro ready to, to speak? Okay, yes, sir. Um, I think that in terms of sleeping and waking, um, the for a couple, if um, there are responsibilities that is expected, like to, like for a couple to wake up in the morning, to have quiet time, if you have a, a or a couple's uh, praying time. If you have um, a partner that wakes up late, then that does not happen every time, and it will keep affecting the devotion in the home. And at times also, for a couple, maybe the, the, child, the wife needs to prepare the children for school, get food and all that. If you have a, um, either the husband that is sleeping late or the wife, then every time either the children will be going late to school, or the other partner that is supposed to help, at least maybe quickly bath them while the wife is uh, making food or something and all that. And that can cause friction to say that um, it doesn't help me. I have to do everything. I have to wake up early. I have to prepare them. I have to pack their food. I have to do all those kind of things. So for a, a, any partner that will have a, a late uh, sleep, uh, late that, that is late waking up, it can it can cause friction in the home that's just for that yeah, just to also add to say that i know that one of the major quarrels among couples is the issue of lateness to church uh, and usually that's because of the matter of waking up particularly sunday morning uh the man or the woman the man sometimes says my wife always makes me go late to church so that's why i don't wait for them I just drive off. So sometimes you see families having to come to church with two cars because the man will just not wait. Or sometimes you see the fact that it's the wife that comes with the children and then the man comes close to announcement time because that's when he woke up. All right. Which one of you is ready to add to this? Dele is, Dele is already looking. All right. Go ahead. Well, um, for me as well, um, First Peter chapter 3, verse 7, help me. Because for me as a person, I like to spend my day full and sleep early. More often than not, when my disciple calls me by 7, 8, he calls me early, I, I, I retire early. Why not have a wife who dispenses her strength gradually and she's not ready to sleep until 12, 11, 12. And for me, by 3.34, I'm up, very active. My wife will not wake up until 
seven, eight. So it, it almost became an issue for us at the, because I want us to wake up in the morning. I want us to pray together. I want us to plan together, but my wife is still sleeping. I want us to clock out immediately, but she's still sleeping. She's still processing herself. So, and I discovered that it, it began to affect us in our early years of marriage. So how did it, how did we come out of it? I learned to know her. I learned to, to understand our home wiring. I learned to understand our home configuration. She calls me, um, um, my body is not, I'm a little restless. When I wake up at not my quiet time, I'm asking myself, what must be done now? And I keep at it. So, and I discovered that it was going to affect us. And like Uncle Isaiah said, I was already leaving her. She was a little too slow for me. She was a little too sluggish for me. She was a little too, uh, that was in the, in the time part. So I wake up, I do my things. When she wakes up, just pray and we are gone. So I knew that it began to create a gap. It be began to create a call between us. So what did we do? We need to understand ourselves. This is my wife. This is me. So I need to calm down for her and to wait for her to boot to be ready before we go. You want to say something? Uh, maybe just to add that. Before yeah. Rumke comes in, I'm sure Rumke doesn't wait at seven o'clock again. So yes. how did it happen? Go ahead. That was even long time ago. That was uh, must have been shortly after we got married. You know, I wasn't working then. There wasn't uh, so I being at home almost throughout the day. I I have things to do, and somehow, somehow, I just discovered that my strength is in the night, and uh, mostly. I just feel that when, for me, I prefer my uh, privacy, something like that. When people are around and everywhere is noisy, I'm not myself. So most times I like walking, doing whatever I want to do at night when everywhere is quiet. So that keeps me awake till in the night. But while all this was going on, I discovered that one major problem that we had then was the issue of communication. You know, just like he said, he would have gone since morning. And like he said, he liked dispensing, making, you know, utilizing his, his whole day. And such that by the time he gets to, and he takes his dinner, the next thing before you call Jack Robinson, is already gone. <laughs> gone. And I also go to work, come back, of course, I want us to talk, but it's already, I will now be saying, D, D, D. We are, in fact, sometimes while we are talking, it's already sleeping. No, now open your eyes. Let me see. He's, the, I talk is in the eyes. Let's see. <laughs> Let me, he said, of course, the next thing I know is, is snoring. <laughs> that was already causing the communication, communication gap. But along the line, God helped us. We were able to resolve that and then. Uh, Look at something that can be that is workable for us. All right. It looks like I'm not going to be able to drag this discussion away from your personal experiences. Well, we will, and it's okay gradually. Uh, the Johnsons have something to add, or we move over to hygiene. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe oh, I should just say. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Maybe I should just say something. One other thing that it can affect. I want us to see the things that are being highlighted that this sleeping and waking up habit can cause. We have talked about um, it can affect our couple's altar. It can affect communication. One other thing that it can easily affect is the issue of the sexual relationship between a husband and wife. If the husband is wants to sleep at 7.38, and the wife is she's still she's, doing she's work still wants to work so asking her to come into the bedroom at that time is it's going to cause trouble it's going to cause trouble so those are issues that it can cause those are problems so i think um we should look at so when we have such an issue so what do we do how do we handle it and i wanted us to look at the body habits 
together, together first, okay. and then we'll look at a way out of it. Because if I if we sit with each one of them, we will not go far. Uh, do the Johnsons want to add, or we should we should go ahead? I think we can go ahead, sir. What I wanted to mention is what mommy said, the issue of sexual life, because it affected us. So I wanted to point that out. All right. So we are looking at the sleep wake habits of husband and wife. This affects not only the husband and wife relationship, it also affects the children. If the if the, you don't achieve a synchrony, and I'll be talking about achieving a synchrony, you have to achieve a synchrony of your sleep wake cycle. It's something you need to deliberately speak about. Now, whereas we are talking about breaking these habits, sometimes breaking them is not very easy, especially if it is something that has been formed from, a, from childhood. I'm the one that said we should take it away from ourselves, but I have to bring us into it now. For me, it was my, when I wanted to do my YA, that's when I formed the habit of sleeping late. My father was a legal practitioner. He would be studying late into the night, preparing for his court cases. So I would go and sit with him and we would study. The earliest we slept was 1.32 a.m. So without knowing I had formed the habit, such that sleeping late became normal with me which meant waking up early became difficult. And like she said, it affected many things. When we, you know, at the beginning of marriage, these are things that are trouble spots. This one destroys family relationships very easily. One wakes early, one wakes late. I wanted to also note that generally speaking, women are supposed to wake up early. I have found, I found a woman that was like me, and that's Ronke. I, I, I don't begin to walk until everybody has gone to sleep. That's when work has started. My own work starts around 10 p.m. when the whole house begins to sleep. So I can have some four hours of undisturbed work. So if I sleep at 2 a.m., don't blame me if I don't wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Should you blame me? For a man, it is okay. And maybe for me, because I'm a missionary and all of that, I can wake up at seven and it will be all right. But for you to go to work at seven, to be at work at 7.30 or eight, waking up at seven is not feasible for a woman. That's why I say, I know that Ruka doesn't wake up at seven any longer because now she works, now she's a vice principal and uh, she has to travel several kilometers before getting to her office. Praise the Lord. So the, the first one we have looked at is this wake sleep habit. The next one is the hygiene habit. Difficult one. Sometimes the husband grew up in an environment where we don't bath, we don't take our bath unless we are going out. So why do you go to Batu when I'm not going out? So if it's inside the house, if, for example, he's not the kind of person that has to report at work at 7 a.m., he may not back, take his back. I have actually, well, thank God you will not know, you will not know who I'm talking about. I've actually had a wife complain to me that her husband takes his back once a week. Once in one week. Of course. It has, that's, that has problems. So we're talking about hygiene, taking your bath, brushing your teeth, a clean environment, dirty rum put clothes. These are all hygiene issues. And you can easily form a habit around them. Who is going to go ahead with us? Benga, the prof. Yes, sir. Um, as we all know that um, cleanliness is next to godliness. Where is that in the Bible? <laughs> eh? I'm not quoting the Bible, sir. <laughs> I, I did not start by saying, according to the word of God. 
But I think um, generally uh, we can all agree that um, it is good to be hygiene. And I've discovered that uh, many times we grew up from different homes that we have formed a particular routine of how we take care of our bodies. And sometimes when we bring that into marriage and from two different backgrounds, um, it tends to affect even the relationship. First of all, from the point of um, like the sexual relationship that uh, mommy spoke of, sometimes you see that one partner who is on the clean side um, is usually repelled by the other partner that is um, not particularly um, maintaining the cleanness of the body. And um, if we don't try to harmonize, which uh, that is what uh, we're going to be discussing later, um, it tends to have also affect the upbringing of the children. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be raising children that um, some will take our side, some will take after us. There are some children that they will take after probably the one that is clean out of the partner and the other one take alongside um, the other favorite partner. So I think it affects, it affects um, sexual relationship. It affects um, the upbringing of the children. And lastly, I can say it also affects the home. Um, everybody wants to visit a home that is clean, that is, that is good looking. So if this is coming from the woman's side, it is even more difficult. If it is the woman that is not very, very hygiene, I think that will bring a lot of problem in the sense that the man will not be happy to bring his friends home and the man will constantly be nagging the woman because you see how you are taking care of this home, all this and all that. So I think it's, it's a very high point that of, of, of an habit that could um, continually bring problem in the home. Thank you, sir. All right. Who is adding to that? Yes, I just wanted to say, in fact, I just, um, I was saying that um, hygiene actually is like an anger trigger for some people uh, because those who, um, are, those who are concerned about hygiene, the partner who is, usually puts in a lot of energy to ensure that the place is clean. Now, this other person who feels he also has a right to the space, but not the right to the work, just comes to scatter. I don't know why sometimes God usually joins the repairer and the scatterer in one house. Uh, so, <laughs> and um, if, um, you know, the, if um, one is not careful, uh, for many homes, that's the first trigger. Uh, a man has gone out or the woman has walked all through, he comes, he throws his um, thing, and she, she, you know, initially he comes with the, uh, the gentle rebook, at uh, dear, take this thing now, put it in the shoe rack, but because as he keeps, he just keeps doing it, and then the, 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 the uh, voice tone begins to rise. They have told you, I don't want this thing, you know, and it, it keeps rising until it becomes, it can actually spoil the entire evening for a family. Uh, so I see that um, the, it's actually, an, it, it triggers anger. Uh, and if one is not careful, uh, it will just snowball from a shoe and the, the couple will exchange uh, heated um, words. So I, I think that um, it's something that to note that um, those who scatter should know that it's hard work to fix, uh, to put things together, and that nobody has monopoly to scatter. It's just that some people have decided to make things work. So if you are the scattering partner, I think you should uh, remember that uh, your, your, your partner is going through a lot of work to keep the place uh, fine. Yeah. Okay, um, maybe what I want to add is um, for some people, body odor, mouth odor can turn off uh, when it comes to sexual relationship. And um, just like we have said that sleep and waking can create inconvenience, maybe the wife sleeps late and is early in the morning and the mouth is smelling and all that. And some people just consider that that's the way I am or is natural, right, from when I was this. And you won't bother to do something about it 
or fix it or fix the body odor and you just feel like it's me and my wife or it's a turn off it's a turn off uh, for sex it's even a turn off for that partner to appeal to you in terms of physical uh, physical uh, appeal especially someone that has never experienced that kind of thing in her family where she's come from and is married to someone and she starts feeling the other and all that and all those things can be fixed but at times somebody may just not care and say that's how i am and it can cause friction in the home yeah yeah hey, well um we've talked about the body talking about hygiene what about the environment what about the clothes that we wear just like we have said look at the environment there are some people just like a uh, brother isaiah said they just don't know how to keep the environment clean. Maybe it's um, from upbringing. because of their background, yes, the upbringing. You enter the bathroom or use the toilet, and uh, particularly, I'm sorry, but particularly, I think it's men most of the time. Most. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, they are the ones that don't know how to clean the toilet. You, you ease yourself. And all the toilet seat is full of urine, and the woman cannot ease herself standing up like you do. She wants to sit down to ease herself, and the whole place is splattered with urine. And I'm telling you, it's very irritating. You just wonder for crying out loud. Um, you you have spit in your mouth, you just put it everywhere. You want to blow your nose, oh, you nose. do it anyhow. You know, all of those things can irritate. easily irritate the, the, the partner. It, it can irritate you and apart from even the issue of sex it just puts you off just go on your own just go just leave me and we, we i've handled a case where the woman says i'm done let me just pack and go i can't take this again it's not even the body the body odor is a different thing i've, I've left you but even the environment you just move here and then you see um, speed, you speed speed somewhere, you see what cause in another place, apart from even putting the shoes anyhow, you know all of those things. And she just told me, excuse me, ma, I'm done. I can't, I can't cope. I've cleaned and cleaned, I've talked, I've encouraged, I'm tired. I'm just tired. And the man, as far as he's concerned, he said, I don't see anything, there's nothing now. What is, what is the thing? You know that kind of thing and it can put you off completely that's not even sex is even the, the this person i'm talking about sex is far 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 sex sex you just go away but even apart from the sex that they are not that they are not even interested she's not even interested but apart from that she's completely repulsed completely with the environment that kind of thing and uh, i think somebody has talked about the issue of presentation being able to present your partner you're coming home from outside and you want somebody to meet your wife or meet your husband and you see this person even though well educated but the clothes is rumpled it's not ironed and you are wondering ah, ah, please now see, he, but he wears his shirt and the the the, there are no buttons you know also, and uh, or he ties the button one one is up the other one is down and know? the person just looks like this is somebody from the bush even though the person is properly educated you know all of those things and you know it just it, it just makes you ashamed so you are not you are not free to bring in anybody or when you bring in somebody you first of all ask the person to uh, to wait and then you rush in and say my dear, my dear. My dear, somebody is coming. Or, somebody you, is or coming. you quickly call call home. Uh -huh. you know, oh, thank God there is GSM now. All of those things and <laughs> it can just cause it can cause a, a breakdown of the home, actually. I wanted to say that uh, hygiene touches everywhere. It touches, it touches what we refer to as the basic needs of man. Sleep, food, what are those other ones? Rest. You can't rest in an environment that is not clean. I don't know whether it is me or it's somebody else. It, maybe it's only me or it affects somebody else. I cannot even study well in an environment that is upside down. Or even pray. Or pray. When I wake up and I want to pray, first thing is I'm cleaning around me. We had to agree 
on that. In the study, it has to be arranged, or else it looks like the spirit doesn't flow. And this is biblical. Every time God wanted to meet with the children of Israel, he told them, sanctify the people. Tell the people to wash their clothes. I was surprised that God would give such an instruction uh, in the Bible. Uh, before I will, I'm already running ahead. So let's, let's deal with nutrition. So it affects food. If somebody is not hygienic, somebody is dirty. Ah. Yeah, imagine somebody, the, the jollof rice is looking very wonderful, but then they brought it inside the plate and you can see, see what is coin, coin in English now? Sponge. sponge. Thank God they, they use foam now. In those days, you see sponge lying at the side of the oil, or, 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 or the hair, hair. it's yeah. strand of our hair, or soap. It puts you off. So you discover that this hygiene affects everything. Let's deal with uh, is uh, is there wanting to add something? Or you will, is daily? Okay, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say that actually this ha this hygiene has a multifaceted impact when it is not well handled. That is what makes people to create kingdoms inside kingdom. Do your mm. own, I do my own, because it looks as if we are not compatible. The man comes in. As it's coming in, you know, uh, apart from the fact that the shoe has a shoe odor or something like that, he drops the shoe in the sitting room. Hmm. He puts this, he just put, and the wife keeps saying, excuse me, sir, that is the shoe rack. He said, shoe rack for shoe, sitting room for shoe, anywhere shoe is, leg we go and meet it there. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes it, 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 it actually cripples harmony, it cripples fusion, it cripples oneness. When that thing is not well handled, God will help us. Out. And I also want to add that maybe that this is one of the things that leads to people now creating rooms. You see a man having his own room, the husband, uh, the wife having her own room. Think, okay, that's your room. Do whatever you want to do in your room. This is my own room. I do whatever I like in my room. And uh, also situations like uh, also creating uh, different toilets. You'll be yes. using that one. Let me be using this one. And that is the beginning of a uh, divorce because right. divorce is die. Two, once it becomes two, this one is using our own, I'm using my own. Now let's look at nutrition, feeding, feeding habits. Uh, some people eat regularly. Some people eat have has had drink. How do you mean? What do I mean by that? Regularly is that some people, their first meal is at 12, two o'clock in the afternoon. By two o'clock, if you don't give them food, there will be fire on the mountain. There can be a golf war in that house because I must eat at two o'clock. Some other people, whether they wake and eat fine, whether anytime they see food, they eat. Whether they don't see food, they may not, they may not think about it. That can be formed into a habit. Second thing about feeding is the volume. Some people eat mountain. Whereas some people, they eat small, but they, they eat small, but they eat several. Some demolish a mountain at once. So sometimes these habits affect the whole. And finally, they, uh, sometimes they are choosy. Sometimes one person says, I don't like swallow. The other person says, eh, I, don't, I don't eat beans. And so the woman is scattered. She doesn't know what to cook for this man. Or she's forced to cook the same thing all the time. So creating a monotony in the household for feeding. I'm sure the women will have plenty to, to say into this. How does this various feeding habits, how do they affect the regular running of the home? Okay, um, I just remembered a woman I encountered that says that 
her husband must eat a fresh soup every day. Mm. So mm. she has to that is make, fresh cooked. Yes, she day. has to make the soup that same day for the man. So anything from the fridge it doesn't take, it has to be fresh, fresh. And it created a lot of stress on her because she was also working. And she, every time she has to go to the market, get fresh stuff to make for that. So there are people that have that habit and said, that's how my mother trained us and that's how we eat and I'm used to it and the wife must continue uh, to do that. So that's uh, just an example that came to me that I wanted to share. Maybe I should just also say that um, because sometimes now we have a lot of um, cross-cultural marriages, uh, you now see where people uh, the woman maybe likes a particular thing. Well, that's a put up for the man, particularly you have um, an Igbo, a Yoruba kind of thing. The, the, this person's soup is, what, what are you eating? Is that food? It's and boiled. They, yeah. And, <laughs> and they don't say, why, why would you say that kind of thing? So somehow you discover that because you didn't speak kindly about my food, um, I just, I also will not speak kindly about your food and no matter how hard you try and then that has led some men to be eating outside uh, which is again the beginning of a you know uh, uh, you know they die the division uh, in the home so he just feels that this wife cannot cook their native meal but there's one uh, eatery there's one uh, local joint where he can eat his local delicacy so he begins to become tempted to eat out and then he's not eating her food and sometimes not properly communicated. This woman gets a bit offended that I cooked food and he comes and, and he just pushes it away. You know, I, I remember several times as we were growing up for my father, he used to say that rice is a bed's food. So okay. when, uh, yeah. when you cook rice, you say, is, is it a bed that you are giving a bed food? You know, so somehow, uh, the the wife must be able to cook his own and then cook for the rest of us and all that. So for some women, when that stress becomes high, they snap, they begin to nag, and then the man gets offended and says, I've lost appetite. I'm not eating. And once there's no eating, there is no, there's no satisfaction in her cooking. He is not satisfied. Um, trouble is just waiting in the corner. Yes, um, Ruke, before I call Titi Layo. Yes, sir. Uh, any home where this exists, definitely it will tell on both the financial, uh, uh, the financial, it will put a financial strain on the family as well as uh, it will affect the children. Because, for example, if the man is or the woman, either of them is choosy in what they eat. They are highly selective. Definitely, the children will not be able to, you know, will not be able to have a balanced meal because each time the woman is cooking, is always thinking, ah, this is what daddy likes. And you know, like our local partner says, what the husband does not eat, the wife does not cook. So the children will not also be rounded. Yes, yeah, will not be balanced. And then of course, each time, the, if is the, the financial aspect will also be there, you are always thinking. Also, if that food store or uh, whatever the, 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 the choice is, you don't have it at all. If it's expensive, you are always, you know, buying, buying, buying. And it will also tell uh, on, the, on the finances. It will put a strain on the finances. And, uh, sorry, sir, I was also going to note that uh, there are also scenarios where the woman is the lazy one who is not resourceful as to as to as to resource her family nutritionally. She's weak in mind, she's weak, she's she's lazy. She doesn't want to be up and doing. And when such scenarios comes up, the husband is longing to be to be ravished by his wife of delicacies, and the woman is only Eba and a buri, eba, eba and buri, and the man keeps saying for crying out loud, I have eaten my portion of eba in life. <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> and the woman says, 
That is the easiest thing I can do. It can create tension. It can create bottlenecks in the house. That's the easiest thing. And the woman is looking for the easiest way out. There are scenarios like that. And the husband is saying, can you help me talk to my wife? Let me just come home and I, from, from afar, I'm smelling fried rice. I'm smelling the love rice. I'm smelling fried chicken. It's not the odor of this uh, bure and the gari that I'm smelling again. And it's already putting me up. I'm, I'm coming up, I'm put up. And like my wife said, it may put the man on the spot to not start eating outside. I said, let me eat outside because I know that what I'm going to meet inside will not readily satisfy me. And if that is already a beginning of divorce. Daily, I'm going to catch you because your emphasis on Eba and Bure, you will explain out outside when we finish. <laughs> All right, Titi Layo. Yes, sir. I think before I talk on the nutrition, the environment of the kitchen is very important. Mm. If you are a type of woman that after dinner, you leave your plate the next day. Like for me, like just a few months ago, I was talking to my mom, I said, no, I want to go and clean my plate. My mom said, eh? no, if you clean your plate after eating at night, after some time, you will be hungry again. That's what we do back then. We don't clean our plate. So she was surprised that, ah, you are clean, but well, I got to know in my disciples' house then, sister Anne. Even though when we have visitors at 1 a.m., we must wait to clean the plate before everybody will go and sleep. So the environment matters most. If the environment is not clean, where you, no matter how uh, delicious or the odor of the food is, immediately the man is coming inside, is going to put the man off. So for me, the environment is very important. And you must make sure that when you finish eating, no matter how tired you are, like for me, she said, there are some time I'm tired, my husband will be the one that will do that because he knows that eh, this woman doesn't like the plates overnight. So, but that the environment must be clean. Uh, on the issue of the nutrition, I just want to emphasize on what Bro Dele said. We need to be creative. Even though, like my husband, uh, our head said, he doesn't like beans. But sometimes I will go on the Google. Uh, on the YouTube. I know how to cook beans. What else can I do to make him like the beans? I'm the only one that likes beans. What the kids they don't like. But there are some that I will cook beans. Hey, mommy, your beans today is very sweet. It's nice. Can you give me more? So we need to be creative. Even the presentation of the food for us as a woman is very important. So there are some, like you are saying, there are some food that the husband likes. There are some food. My husband can eat rice. Seven days in a week, he will not get tired. That's my husband. So, but for me, I, how can we be eating rice, 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 rice? But even though it's rice, I need to be creative with it. I need to see what I can do instead of cooking only white rice. I need to, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to see what I can do to make it more attractive, even to the children. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Let me just add something to the issue of the. Okay. Environment. Right. Talking about the, the environment of the kitchen. Actually, leaving your place overnight it is not even an issue of whether you like it or you don't like it. It's an issue of um, the effects. When you leave your place overnight, you attract rodents into your kitchen. You attract cockroaches. You attract rats. You attract house flies, which can cause diseases. So it's not an issue of I like it or I don't like it, or this is how I grew up, or this is how we used to do it. It is a matter of part of the hygiene that we are talking about. It can easily cause sicknesses and diseases, infection for your, for your home. So leaving our kitchen clean, cleaning it before you sleep in the night, covering your dustbin, your, your kitchen environment being clean. Don't pour water on the floor and leave it. All of those things are part of hygiene, part of keeping sicknesses and diseases out. And then um, that's talking about the kitchen environment. I'm very happy we talked about that. The other thing that having different, talking about this nutrition, having um, different um, food, being choosy about food is that it creates stress on the woman. And this one likes this, this one doesn't like this. It creates stress. Why don't we eat the same thing? Whether you have had your question of it um, when you are young or not, let's eat the same thing. 
And like they have said, it will affect the children not bringing and all of that. But like uh, Sister Titi said, being creative is very necessary. Again, apart from attracting people to eat it, it also helps us to eat balanced diet. They are just eating rice, 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 rice. That's just simply carbohydrates. They are just eating beans, 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 beans. Then there's no carbohydrates in your food. And yet, when we have children that are growing, they need to eat balanced food. So when we eat this, we also eat that. I know that um, there are times when we just eat what God has provided. There are times when all we have is this a bambure that uh, Nele was talking about. But then what we are talking about is that don't make a habit out of it. If that's what God has provided for us, oh, sure, we eat it with thanksgiving. While we are praying, for God to give us something else to eat. But he put emphasis on the fact that it's not because that, that's what God has provided. It's not because that's the easiest thing to eat. Apart from that, there are some people, a bangure is even a little tedious for somebody who is lazy. For somebody who is lazy, let's just eat uh, Indomie, let's eat Pag, let's eat uh, whatever. You know, it's, it's just the easiest thing. Give the children Gary. Just, just, to go and sleep. That's, that's what, some people do to their children indomie every day or some people is pap every morning or things like that food that is not nutritious just because that's the easiest thing to do and it's not correct our children ought to be brought up to eat balanced even the adults also we should eat balanced so we are talking about a woman not being lazy and uh, you say ah, it's because my husband doesn't like it we are us it is actually because well, I'm tired. I can't do any cooking tonight. Well, hey, children, go and take Gary or I'm going to sleep. Or you just give them bread, 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 bread every time out of laziness. I have received the communication from um, a number of people that we are rushing, that we are running too fast. And I am running because what we have to cover is plenty. And, and uh, of course, maybe. We should also give opportunity for those who want to make comments from outside uh, on this. No problem. If we are not able to finish today, we, we should talk about how to break. This we are going to definitely, to we are going to stop, talk about how to break these habits and how to stop many of these things. So I, I, I wanted to speak about a, a little bit more about the clean environment. Uh, you discover that clean environment and and nutrition seems to be tied together. A clean environment and your nutrition seems to be tied together. A clean environment itself, you know, a, a, a bad environment nauseates. It causes nausea. How do we say that in simple English? It causes you, nausea. It causes it's like you feel like vomiting. You don't feel like taking in. You feel like throwing out. So when the environment is not clean, you may discover that your children don't eat. It's not because the food is not good, not, not only because the food is not good, but it may just be that the environment is nauseating. The environment uh, makes you full without eating. And this clean environment or bad environment is usually caused by microorganisms. There are some microorganisms that they are around your environment, they, they, they emit odor that makes the place smell stench, smell of stench. Uh, and if somebody's mouth is not clean, you have microorganisms that are hiding in the teeth, they affect appetite. So you see that somebody doesn't eat, sometimes it is tied to hygiene. He doesn't brush his teeth very well, or he doesn't um, he doesn't take good care of it. And there's something I want I want to speak a bit more on this mouth issue. I found out that it has broken so many relationships. You come close to somebody and you, you, instinctively uh, he's talking to you. You have to turn your nose aside. It's a it's a it's a very bad thing. Everybody needs to take care of their mouth. And the matter is this, actually, 
I think it's the Oyibo man that caused trouble for us. When I say the Oyibo man, I mean that is a culture that was brought to us, particularly those of us in Africa. But when we were going to learn the culture, we didn't learn it properly. Because the, the white man brushes his or her teeth after meals, not before. If you read about brushing your teeth, you will see that the recommendation is that you should brush your teeth after every meal. Why do they say that? Put lodgments in your teeth, especially for people who don't talk. There's no airflow. It's an anaerobic environment. An environment devoid of oxygen breeds microorganisms, germs. That's what causes 75% of mouth odor is caused by leftover food that is hiding in the teeth that the microorganisms have started working on and they are producing this ugly smell. Very important. It affects appetite. It affects ability to eat much. It affects so many things. And uh, we need to think about it. Let me give an um, opportunity to anybody from outside. If you have something that you want to uh, contribute, just raise your hand. If you raise your hand, we can give you opportunity. Whether you want to open your video or you don't want to open it, no problem. We can take your voice only in case you don't want your video to be seen. If anybody wants to make a comment from outside or you want to ask a question, don't ask question on how do, how do I stop my husband from doing this. But if you have a contribution as to how any of these body habits affect the home negatively, you are free to raise your hand. All right? Um, if any one of us still has anything to comment, uh, you are allowed to make comments. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. All right, go ahead. Yeah, what I just want to, uh, I don't know, as this habit normally happen in my, you know, in, my, in our family, whereby, uh, you know, my wife is the kind of person that she really enjoy we eating together. You know, anytime she she teaches food, she will like put everything together, let us eat together. I'm a kind of person that I love really, like I like eating like personally because there's a way I eat, I used to eat my uh, swallow. Like I take my time, you know, and we eating together, the way she, at times I feel like, no, 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 because I don't eat meat after until I finish eating the swallow itself. Then in the process, she already finished eating the meat already. Every time I complain, like, please, does this, I want my food separate. You like, so we started animating in the house, you know, started feeling like he doesn't want this, he doesn't, you know, and I've been trying to complain it several times. There's no matter of maybe this is what I want because after I finish eating, that is where I started eating my meat or fish or biscuit. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I just let me just ask if it's something that is be shared. Stop me. A common is a common occurrence in many homes. Uh, some some of us were raised. In fact, in Yoruba families, if you start eating your meat before you finish your food, they will say you are a thief. You are going to steal when you grow up. So you have to eat your swallow and uh, or your rice and finish it first before you eat your meat. I can relate with that. Whereas in some other homes, this is your own. You can eat it in whatever order. All right. Thank you very much for that comment. Any, any other person? If you see someone else and I've not seen, you you can uh, alert me. All right. Or you want to write the question on the on the platform? These are all um, uh, they are all allowed. I was just thinking that um, maybe if we begin to look at the solutions before our time runs out on us, because the time is running away. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Now we are seeing that this physical habit, let me begin by saying that this physical body habit can be changed to a large extent. To a large extent, these various 
body habits can be changed. The Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, whatsoever therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you are doing, make sure that it is to the glory of God. Why am I bringing this scripture is? This is the foundation of breaking a bodily habit. You remember at the beginning we said, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action repeatedly, you eventually reap a habit. Now, why are we saying whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. The first thing I want to affect is the way you think. For any of these habits, the first question to ask yourself is, this way I am behaving, this habit that I have formed, does it bring glory to God? Does it make the will of God to come to pass in my life or in the life of my partner? Now, you will find out that this scripture applies to all the breaking of habits. My intention before was to wait until we have applied all the bad habits and then we start looking at this. But maybe we may not even be able to go beyond these bodily habits for tonight. So we need to deal with this very well. The first thing is for you to have a rethink. This way I have thought that I am a scatterer. My wife is a gatherer. Eh? Like I said to my wife, when we first got married, I said, thank God. God has brought a scatterer and a gatherer together. I have anointing to scatter. You have anointing to gather. That's good. If I don't scatter, what will you use your anointing to do? That was first my mindset. And I would say, my dear, stop troubling about this thing. You know that uh, uh, that's a... Uh, if I, I'm coming in, in those days, when I used to work on the farm, I had a small farm before I came full time, and I'm coming from the farm. As I sit on the pallet like this, the first thing is to throw away my shoe and throw away the other one, I remove this. Uh, if I'm wearing a pair of stockings, I remove it from the boot. Everything is smelly, it's in the pallet. My wife will say, my dear, take this thing in. I say, well, leave me alone, carry it. Where did I stop you from carrying it? And, you know, that was my first mindset. And because that was my first mindset, breaking that habit was near impossible. Until I began to see that, just like Brother I, uh, Isaiah said earlier, that, um, number one, nobody has a monopoly of scattering. But much more importantly, those who like their workspaces clean, put in a lot of effort. They put in a lot of energy. It is, I'm sorry to use the word, maybe it's a bit too difficult. It's sheer wickedness to just deliberately create work for your partner to do. Whether it's the husband or the wife, it doesn't matter. The first thing you need to do is to have a rethink. For you to break that habit, you must first of all accept that that habit does not glorify God. The person who doesn't brush his feet and is smelling in and out, the clothes is rumpled, everywhere is dirty. How will the glory of God be, be shown in that kind of environment? By the time you are coming in, and they say, uh, and unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, sometimes we think holiness means shoddiness. Because you are a disciple now. Ah, his holiness is the spirit. Spirit, spirit holy. If you a whole, let me tell you, a holy spirit does not like to dwell in an unholy environment, in an unclean environment. If I borrow the professor's uh, adage now, they say uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Actually, they go together. I was surprised. I was reading uh, in Exodus chapter 19. 
verse 10. I think I quoted it. God wanted to meet with the people. And the Lord said to Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothes. Ah, I was surprised that God was telling them to wash their clothes. Because God wants to come and meet with them. God wants to come and walk in the camp. You know, it's just that time will not allow me. There are many more such instructions in, in Deuteronomy. When you, when you go to the toilet, you have to dig the ground and cover it with sand. And then the Bible says, because the Lord your God is in your midst and is walking in the camp. So it means that smell does not allow God to walk in our house. So the presence of God, again, is also affected by a clean environment. I want everyone who is listening to me not to just think that this is just natural. Uh, it's because you, you, were grew, you, you were brought up in the Oyibo environment. Uh, that's why uh, all these children that grew up in staff quarters, they will not allow somebody to, to rest. No, this is biblical. This is Christian. God said, because I'm walking in your camp. Let's read um, Deuteronomy chapter 23. Said, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he shall see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Can you imagine? And if you open that scripture actually, I think he's really talking about hygiene. That's Deuteronomy 23. Let me open it, so that maybe we need to read a verse, a verse before, or a verse after. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 14. All right? From verse 12. From, let's read from verse 12. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou shalt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back, and cover that which comment from thee. Why? For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, and it shall see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. What are we dealing with tonight? That an unclean environment puts the Lord off. Don't say this is Old Testament. Every Old Testament principle is valid in the New Testament. The application may be different. Of course, in the Old Testament in Israel, when you want to go do toilet, you go somewhere and dig the ground and pour in it. Now we have toilets. Let your toilet be clean. Let your room not be smelly. Buy deodorant. Every time my wife goes on shopping, I'm, I'm amazed how she will... She, and, you know, the creativity we, we are talking about, she's changing the different, um, what do you call it, perfume. Say, I've used strawberry. Let me use spring this time. Let me change this. And, you know, sometimes I come into and I say, hmm, my wife, my wife, my wife, you have changed the perfume of your toilet again. And, you know, it excites something. But very seriously, we are dealing with God first. And I want you to know that the condition of your body, the condition of your environment is something that affects God coming into that environment. A mouth that is not brushed does not glorify God. Clothes that are drum, rumpled and dirty. It doesn't matter with the kind of work that you are doing. Even if you are a farmer, I remember the wife that told me that uh, her husband, you know, takes his bath once a month, once a week, was a farmer, goes to the farm every day and still doesn't take his bath with all the sweat and all of that. That's not good. Apart from putting off your wife, it doesn't attract divine presence to your environment. This is very important and I want us to uh, think about this as we go. I, I want to first of all deal with thinking. And even talking about think your thinking process. Yes. You, you should also know that it can cause infection, sickness, disease to you. Mm. If you also keep remembering that, that you are only 
attracting sicknesses, diseases to yourself. I mean, there will be many infections, air infections, nose infection, uh, armpits, all those kind of infections that normally affect the whole. Now, the other issue of sleeping early and waking early, this is a bit more difficult than the others because sometimes because of habits, long form, if it is affecting the home and you cannot find a middle ground, so the next thing I want to talk about when, when we are talking about, uh, okay, let, don't let me rush myself. First, I'm dealing with habits that can be changed and should be changed. I said most of these habits can be changed and we should attempt to change them. Like the one with hygiene, they can be changed and it should be changed. The one with feeding can also be changed. They can be changed. First thing I want to recommend for every home, write a, what do you call it, food timetable. Have a food timetable. That will ensure that your feeding is both regular and balanced. You can change your timetable, review your timetable from time to time, depending on what is available in the market and depending on what is available in the pocket. But have a schedule of feeding so that you can have regular balanced feeding habits. And let me say this, is the husbands that are guilty, you can see that most of the examples that we have given me, is the husband that says, give me rice. All this, uh, just give me rice. Give me rice in any shape you like. Now, daddy, we need you to know that you, your body needs more than rice. Unless you want to force God to regulate your, your feeding. And for some of you who have too much money, that you don't wait on God again for, your, for money to, food, to, to feed, how will God regulate it? I remember when we were young, uh, when we were much, our children were young, sorry, when our children were young, and uh, you know, there was not too much money in the pocket, and it was yam. My mommy tried every trick with yam, yam and stew, fried yam, boiled yam, uh, porridge, because yam was what was, we didn't have rice. We did not have beans, it was only yam. So she has to color the yam in different, different shapes. So ah, the children say, ah, mommy, is it only yam that somebody will be eating this? I say, ah, is it only yam you are eating? You are eating body. Yeah, it's still yam, Joe. It's yam. When they want to, you know, carry placard like that, I, I told them, I said, do you know that God may be regulating our feeding? God knows that um, what you need to make you strong and healthy is inside yam. That's why he's providing yam for us. When we are eating yam and God sees that it is enough, he will provide gari, he will provide beans, he will provide all the other things. But maybe that doesn't affect many homes. Many of you have enough money, you do your shopping once in a month, you have already stocked your stuff. Is The matter is your habit of eating. You need to know that if you don't eat balanced feed, you predispose the children to sickness. You make the children fall sick regularly because if their food does not contain enough protein, and I must, at this point, I must talk about the junk that is called fast food. Some families even, they say, I want to have a day out. You carry your child to these eateries regularly, maybe once a week, once a month, once in two weeks, and they eat all sorts of, all sorts of things, prepared with plenty, plenty chemicals. We have seen mothers that the only thing their children eat to school every day is Indomie. 
noodles, spaghetti, all these things, these artificial things that have gone through heat and stress, and many of it contain very little nutrients. If my wife is going to give us uh, noodles to eat in the house, ah, you need to come and eat my wife's noodles. Don't come to our house and ask for it. But she will put vegetables, she will put carrots, she will put uh, crayfish, she will put also, in fact, by the time you are eating, you know that it is not the noodles you are eating. There is enough inside that thing to make you, your mouth will have started watering before you start eating it. Actually, those who, who, who give you, who make the noodles, if you look at the pack, yes. the pack, they put it there. They make it very they put uh -huh, they, they, add medicine, medicine, they, they put vegetables. They don't add it. They, they, don't they, it. they ask you to add yes, it. Yes, they expect you to add it for it to be nutritious. All right. So you need to be careful about all of these things because they cause nutritional deficiency. Some diseases are just deficiency. There's nothing else in it. Vitamin C deficiency is called COVID. You see your gum start bleeding. Many things. That's vitamin C deficiency. Just ordinary eating enough orange, oranges, orange, uh, all those citrus uh, fruits, orange, grapes, lemon, and all of those things have plenty of vitamin C. And they, you will not need to go to hospital. By the grace of God, because of correct feeding over the years, we hardly go to, none of us have card. Okay, we have card for our teeth. That's the only thing that carries us to the hospital. And that's even a long time ago. So all of these things, they affect your well-being. They make you to either live well or to live an unhealthy, sickly life. We need to be very careful about this uh, so that you don't run into uh, things that make you fall sick regularly. All right. Um, I, I was looking at, there are many, many, uh, many questions that have been thrown up for us. If I can handle some of them, I will handle it before I tie up our meeting. I can see that our time has really run out. Uh, all right. Uh, diet for various health conditions such as high BP, diabetes, high cholesterol. Definitely. We cannot sit down to begin to talk about those diets. There are nutrition experts. There are groups where they talk about natural feeding. And all of this, and I don't mind, I can drop the link for some of us in the group if you are interested. I found out that, I found a group that uh, is safe, is relatively safe. There are many other groups that I will not join. But I'm in a group where I watch the organic things that are going on there. And they, they, they make recommendations on different things that you can eat. Definitely, we cannot sit down to be uh, talking about that. Somebody is talking about the issue of keeping the refrigerator clean inside. My dear, what do you say about that? I think it's obvious. I don't yes. understand. Refrigerator. Yes. Cleaning the inside no, of it. Instead of the... Uh, cleanliness you are talking about of course if you don't clean keep your refrigerator clean you can still have cockroaches inside it i've seen cockroaches inside the fridge if you don't keep it clean actually what we are talking about is developing a habit of cleanliness all around everywhere every time just make sure that your environment is clean definitely the refrigerator should be clean your kitchen should be clean. Once water spills on the floor, mop it immediately. Let there be either a rank or a mop in your kitchen permanently. Once you pour water, clean it. When you eat, wash your plates. Don't pile it up. Some people like piling plates up. Don't pile plates. Don't keep your doors being covered on a regular basis. Empty it every day. Don't leave doors being for three, four, five days. Bit of cleanliness generally. And like we have said, this habit can be changed. These bad habits can be changed, could be changed. We said it starts with your thoughts. We have given you the reasons. So if you tell yourself, I know I need to change this, 
then you can change it. Even if you try for some time, you fail, and then you remember, oh, I don't want sicknesses and diseases around me. I want my children to grow well. Look at, we are talking about um, diets for different diseases. The, the diet we can say here is that it is possible to, to keep out these sicknesses and diseases if we eat balanced. Balance. If you take plenty of water, if you take fruits and vegetables, somebody was talking about Gure. Gure is quite nutritious. But for the sake of um, um, BMC, I remember that at the very beginning of our marriage, my husband kept shouting, he was variety in this house. Meanwhile, where I grew up, there was nothing like that kind of variety. Just eat your straight white rice and stew. So I didn't grow up with having um, variety. But my husband just kept saying, right early, excuse me, give us variety. Don't just give, even if you want to give us rice, don't just give us plain white rice. Do something about it. And even though I didn't grow up with it, I started telling myself, oh, so let, let me make it um, attractive. Let me give the children variety. Let me give my husband variety. So these days, for example, I know that most people don't like beans. When, when uh, there's carrot, for example, there's carrot out now. When I'm cooking my beans, I put carrots inside it just to make it attractive. When I'm cooking my beans, sometimes I put the um, pepper and oil in it. Sometimes I don't. I just cook my beans, put my carrots in it, and then we, we fry the stew just to make it attractive. When you want to give the children beans, you can make moi moi, you can make a kara. Just give them different things. Don't just make it beans that you have already put pepper and uh, oil inside it every time. Give them the right thing. Give them the right thing. And earlier, my husband talked about having a, a food schedule. What the food schedule does is that it, it ensures that, one, your children eat the right thing. It ensures that they eat balanced. It saves you time. Hey, children, what did we eat yesterday? I forgot it. That's a you, bad housewife. You, 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 you spent two, three, four, five minutes thinking, so what will I give them to eat today? Oh, we, are being, we ate rice yesterday. We ate, what did we eat day before yesterday? And you waste your time. If there is a schedule, you already know what to do. You can plan your time. For example, I tell, I tell a lot of ladies, before you sleep in the night, you know that your children are going to go to school early. Check your food schedule. What do we have to, what, do, what are we supposed to eat tomorrow? Or what will the children take to school tomorrow? You can cook it halfway before you sleep. It saves you a lot of time. But when you don't have a, a food schedule, you are first of all thinking, so what can I do? That's why you give them fast foods, something you can quickly do. You say, yeah, it's because of time. Let me quickly just give them cereal. Let me just give them this. Meanwhile, if you had a schedule, you would have checked before you sleep. So what can I do? You can cook it halfway. You can plan your time. It helps you. It makes your children to eat balanced. The other thing is that when you give your children the same thing, it makes it difficult for you to take them out um, on a holiday. You want to go and visit a family. Mm. You know, I, there was a time I had a, a, a family visit. The parents were not there, just the children, about three or four. And then we were supposed to eat swallow. Somebody said, I don't like draw soup. One of the children said, Me, I don't like draw soup. I don't eat draw soup. So I said, okay, maybe all of them will eat vegetable. So I could say, what of them say, ah, mommy, me, I don't eat vegetable. I prefer uh, draw soup. So I said, ah, ah. Children of the same family, one does not eat vegetable. The other one does not eat draw soup. So I said, eh, hey. so I will cook draw soup for one. I will cook vegetable for one. The third one, what will I give you? I said, no. And mm -hmm. right from when my children were young, I told my children, we don't choose what we eat. You eat what mommy gives you. That is the law. And up till now, it is the law in my house. I remember when we grew up, I started having disciples. Some disciples would say, ah, when I eat beans in the night, it will trouble me. And I told, I remember I told you, I said, no, inside my house, whatever you eat will not trouble you. Will it has been troubling you in somewhere else, inside my house. When, if it is me that I give you, it will not trouble you. Say, ah, mommy, I don't eat beans in the night. I said, no, there's nothing like that. You eat whatever I give you, and it will not trouble you. You know, if not, children will just grow to, to, to disturb you, and many things can go wrong. So for those of us who have young children, please, let's have a food schedule. 
give them everything. Let them eat balanced. When they go to visit, you will not give your host problem. You will not give be, your host you problem. You have to take a manual uh, after your children. This one does not eat this one. This one does not do this. This one. You have to follow them with instructions to where they are going. You not find places to go. And I must comment that the husbands have a role to play in this matter. Once mommy came up with that law and said, you eat whatever mommy gives you in this house, I followed it up with my own instruction, including daddy. Once I did that, nobody could complain again in the house. My wife doesn't cook two separate foods. It's whatever she cooks that we are all eating. And that law grew up with the children. My children can go anywhere. They can eat anything. Of course, they are grown up now. They can now start uh, telling their wives telling their wife lives what they want. want. See, <laughs> I, I would discover that that made it easy for them because two of our children that have married, they, they didn't marry Yoruba. Yes, people. they married people. So it made it easy for them to adjust to the food of the other tribe. They didn't have too much problem because we, we, we grew them eating anything that mommy gives you at any time. So it, 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 became, it became easy for them to adjust to all this other food. All right, one, two, two more scriptures, and uh, we are going to wrap up uh, for a time of praying. Two more scriptures quickly. Uh, Isaiah? I was saying that, um, that um... Maybe we'll take them quickly, sir. Okay, we'll take them very quickly. I, I have had you. Uh, uh, Proverbs 23, verse 2 says, Proverbs 20, uh, and then the other one is Proverbs 25, 16. I've opened 25, 16. So let me read that one first. Proverbs 21, 25, 16. Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Now, that means we don't eat any particular food because of its taste. Every food has the nutrients to add to your body. Honey has its place. You cannot eat the Yoruba man say, I for Gio, that you have plenty money. Then you buy a bag of salt and you, are, you, you serve salt and you are eating it. What it means is that every nutrient has the little, every food item has its little, little nutrients that it adds and is the little of everything that makes it balanced food. So the fact that you are eating something and it's like honey to you does not mean that that's the only thing you are going to be eating. There's something, there's something called sufficient. I think the word here is what is what is good enough for you i wish i had time to check other translations but what is sufficient if you eat too much of anything it spoils all right yes if you find honey eat just enough too much of it and you will vomit that applies to every food too much of anything they say is bad so in in feeding ourselves we need to keep remembering that too much of anything is bad. Ah, I'm remembering that my time. Let's read the second scripture, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23 and verse 2. It says, come, uh, let me read verses 1 and 2. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to your throat. Either be a man given to appetite. Be not thou desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Now, what do we? What am I bringing out from this? Put a knife to your throat means know what you pass through. I don't know how to explain it. It's as if disconnect your stomach from your mouth. All right. The good news translation says, if you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. This talks about volume. You don't need to eat a mountain at once and finish what food that can be that can spread over two weeks in the house in three days you have finished it somebody gives the family a chicken and or your mommy your wife buys a chicken and puts it in the fridge 
And until that chicken finishes, your, your dainty eyes will not rest. You just keep going and eat it. Keep going. Put a knife to your throat. It's a bad habit that once something is provided, until you finish it, you will not rest. That's a bad habit. It's wasteful. Apart from the effect on your body, we have said you eat too much of anything, it, it, it uh, troubles you health-wise. Secondly, it wastes money. Remember, some of our sisters said it before, like the man that must, you must cook a pot of soup fresh every day. I think you should go and uh, hire a, an eatery. Or else your wife will just simply become a cook. And that's all she will ever be useful to you for. So you, if you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. Eat so much, eat a little, and, and be satisfied. Um, in fact, they told us that our body is 67% water. I hope I am correct. 60 something percent. Ah, no, I think it's much higher than that. Something percent water. Which means an average meal should have more water than your food. And if you have already filled your stomach with the eba, and the stomach is already full, you can't drink water. Your stomach will get over distended. So at the end of the day, you discover that you are not taking enough water, which will also can end up in constipation. Or if it doesn't end up in constipation, you see your feces are difficult to pass. Your food stays much longer in your alimentary canal. It breeds sicknesses and disease. These are all thoughts, thinking patterns to break an unhealthy physical body habit. We have not finished dealing with the body because we have not talked about work habits. But when we come uh, next month, by the grace of God, the way I'm doing this, we may have to look for how to shorten this thing next time or else we spend the whole year dealing with these habits. But if there are things that are helping people, I think it's it's all right with me. Um, if there are, brother... Yes, I think somebody... Yes. And uh, one brother talked to the other time, I was talking about the fact that um, he doesn't like to eat his meat until he finishes his food. All right. And the sister doesn't mind. And somebody is saying we have not answered the question. Should we encourage the brother to keep eating separately from the wife? No. We have already said any of these habits that we have talked about can be, can be changed. changed. It just depends on how you think. If the sister is also listening to us, just know it that eating meat. Um, restrain yourself. Just restrain yourself. Restrain yourself. Keep the meat. And uh, the brother does not have to separate his food from, the, from his wife simply because. Uh, the wife eats meat during the food. If the two of you have separate uh, pieces of so, meat, allow her to eat her own. Her own. <laughs> and you eat your own after the meal. Um, I mean, but the important thing is that let's, husband and wife, let's understand one another. Like somebody else said, some of these things are foundational. They are things that we grew up with. They are things that we are used to from where we are coming from. And because we grew up in different environments, these things have become a habit. But despite that, those habits can be changed. They can be broken. So the first thing is agree that I want to break this because it is not helping my relationship with, with my, my spouse. spouse. So I can change it. If the Bible says, love your wife, I mean, for the sake of loving my wife, why can't I change a habit that is not um that it's not really even dating. good yes it's not even good to my health it's not good to our health it's not good for our children it's not it's not it's not even attracting the presence of god like we have had let's change our orientation let's change our thoughts let's uh, admit our own area whether it has been spoken about now or not something that your how your spouse has been complaining about please sit down about it talk over it tonight pray about it decide that okay now i know this person doesn't love this doesn't like this we can change it we can adjust and let me tell the partner um habits die hard. hard so even though she ha he or she has said don't worry i will change this it may not happen overnight 
So you two have to be patient. Pray for your spouse. Excuse me, pray for your spouse. If there's a habit that you don't like, after you talk about it, the way you even talk about it depends. If you, if you just say, yeah, I don't like this, and you are shouting, the man may wonder what is this. But I believe that after tonight, several of us will decide to change. Pray for your partner. Be patient with him or her. Keep encouraging him. Oh, when he makes that, I say, oh, praise God, my husband is doing this. Oh, my, my wife has changed. Encourage the efforts to change and be patient for him or her. Over time, these things will change. I believe so. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you. That's why it is good to have a wife. She has helped me. I was forgetting to handle the issue of habits that are very difficult or cannot actually be changed. Let me warn us that sometimes some habits take forever to change. And she has identified four things which I want us to remember. Number one, talk about it. Sit down and have a discussion, a loving, gentle, amiable discussion. Number two, pray about it. Number three, pray, uh, number two, pray about it. Pray deliberately about it. Pray for him. Pray together on the issue. Number three, be patient. Wait for the habit to break. We have said you have to sow and reap. It is not the day you sow a seed that you reap a harvest. It may take weeks. It may take months. Some may take even almost a year before you see appreciable change. Be patient. Then finally, encourage each other. Four things she has talked about. Talk about it. Pray about it. Be patient in waiting for it. And finally, encouraging, encourage one another with it. I, I will leave space for my wife to lead us to pray uh, quickly. Uh, even though our time has gone, but um, we, we cannot finish all of this without praying. Go ahead. All right. I think um, we have already talked about praying. Let's pray together tonight. I want um, each person to first of all identify this habit. This is what I do. Oh, I didn't know that it can be harmful. Oh, I didn't know. I just felt ah, I can't change. I didn't know it can be changed. I didn't know I can do something about it. I didn't know that God can help me. I didn't even know that God is not happy about it. I thought, I thought my wife was just talking. I thought my husband was just being hard on me. Please admit that, okay, I've seen this. And then let's make, um, let's agree, make a decision to say, okay, since I have heard that this can be changed, I will change. Please make a decision. Make a decision before God. Say, God, I want to change this habit. Not brushing my teeth regularly, not having my bath regularly, wearing clothes that are wrong. I didn't know I was not representing you well. Throwing things around, scattering things. I didn't know that I was putting more work and more effort on my spouse. Lord, I will change. And then, Ask for grace. Lord, please grant me grace. Father, please grant me grace. Lord, please help me to change quickly. Even though we have said that these habits can be hard to break, but then if we pray, I believe that God can speed it up. Please pray for grace. God, please come and help me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, please come and help me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, come and help me. Grant me grace. Release grace unto my life to change this habit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to be a correct representative of your kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have said that it is not just speaking in tongues that makes us correct representatives, but we read it from the scriptures that even God does not like a bad environment. Father, please come and help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have talked about nutrition. Can you beg God and say, God, please help us with nutrition? God, please provide the right thing for us. Do you know that the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given unto you? Can you beg God and say, God, provide the right thing for us in this home? 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, please give us variety. Give us carbohydrates. Lord, give us protein. In the name of Jesus, God, please give us vitamins. Please, God, give us fruits to eat. Give us vegetables to eat. Give us fish to eat. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please beg God and say, buy variety for all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And husband, please, can you pray for your wife? As far as this cooking is concerned, God, please help my wife. God, please help my wife. Strengthen my wife. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let's pray for ourselves finally. God, please help us. Blend us together. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And Father in heaven, we just speak with you tonight that hearing that these habits can be changed, please, first of all, change our orientation. Amen. Father, please help us to change our thoughts. Amen. Father, help us to agree that these things can be changed and that we will change them. And Father, we plead with you, please release grace unto us. Father, please help us to change this. We beg you in the name of Jesus. We plead with you, please provide for us. Amen. We beg you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Help us to eat balanced. Yes. Help us to eat the right thing. We plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, let better homes, correct environments yes. develop as a result of tonight's meeting. Amen. Let relationships become better Amen. between husband and wife. We beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for tonight. We thank God for this uh, beautiful input that God has given us uh, tonight. Um, we have one or two pieces of announcement for us. Um, next month, the edition for me will come up on the 21st of May, same time. And uh, also, if we have questions, um, we can uh, interact with the admin. Uh, admin on the, we have different people designated as admin on the platform. So if we have need for counseling, or we have questions, we can get it across to the admin. They will be willing to help us out. Shall we, uh, time is fast spent already. Shall we just share the grace together as we close for tonight? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you and God bless. Have a wonderful night rest. <laughs>